Welcome back to another game, and in the green we have one of everyone's probably favourite players who's been around so long. We have RVK Orcus, probably better known as Chris. In the blue we have Sal Ask uh, playing in the blue, which is kind of, I always like saying blue on a map like this, it's just easy to really watch. Green can be a bit annoying and we all know grey is absolutely disgusting to watch on a map like this. Orange can be bad on some maps, but that's grey is always the one people seem to have trouble with. Anyway, both players playing as Hun, so we are up for a Hun war. And well, it's Chris, so we should be impressed either way what happens here. Especially if Sal manages to take it, it'll be really good. And if Chris manages to take it, I'm sure he's going to play really well. So either way, we're in for a good game, which is why I like casting players like this. So Sal, let's have a quick look at the map for him. Having the gold in the back here, good location, bad area. Well, good area, bad location, I think would be the best for this. Uh, gonna have two pieces there, gonna be hard to saturate that fully, but it could be a lot worse. Being in the back though is kinda nice, but the area is extremely open. Also having a stone over here, so not quite as nice as you'd want it to be. Gold over here as well, plus gold here, and one right over here. Again, hilly area, it's not so bad, could be a lot worse, but... Still saying that, there is a hill here around the town centre, is one on the wood as well, so again, all harassment coming in, we'll be having that 25% attack bonus, and anything attacking uphill will have that 25% taken off them as well, making for a 50% difference overall. I guess we add them up. But hey, we'll see how it goes over in the green. Chris having his gold on the front. This is his main one. On the top of the hill too. So hopefully he will be able to hold this. If not, he could be in a bit of trouble. Because if he gets pushed down here, naturally the attack bonus will be working against him. And he will have to try and figure out a way to get to this gold or move to another one. But saying that, his map's pretty bad for gold. He does have a stone in the back, which could be helpful. Saying that's probably too far away to be helpful anyway, even if he was mine. Uh, unless he decided to wall this section here off. But he's not, so it doesn't matter at all. Has his wood in the back, has a wood on the front here as well if he wants to use it. I would say he is relatively closed and he could just chuck some wall there, straight across here, straight across here, and across here. It's kind of closed in, kind of open. It's going to require a lot of wall to get it done, uh, but there is a lot of forest he can use in between. Whereas over here, this is just pretty much all open. If you wanted to wall around here, it would be a massive area, way too hard to defend. So probably not going to see walls from either player in this one. Uh, which should make for a relatively interesting game. Sal being on the wood here in the back, and berries as well naturally being taken. Don't think there's anything else too special going on right now. Barracks actually coming up for Chris. Could see a drush here, potentially. Got enough villagers on wood to be able to do so if he wants to. And Scout will take these villagers down, actually, at this stage. There is no loom yet done for Chris. So this is going to make it a bit harder for him to be able to do this. And, ooh, taking some extra gold as well, naturally. So he will be getting loom quite soon, actually, right now. I think he's noticed that once his opponent attacks over here, definitely worth getting loom in case it comes back. So Scout can kill an unloomed villager fairly easily. And saying that, he's going for a bit of a wall on the front here. Wasn't expecting this. Naturally, Militia being created as well. Does have enough to create all three right now. Still should get a pretty decent uptime, actually, as well. We'll see how that goes. Over here, isn't going for a barracks, so it looks like he will be trying to defend this with just units at the moment. Might try... Saying that, it's going to be pretty hard to wall in as well, actually. He could run some Palisade across here to the farm. Uh, could potentially run some across here as well, but it looks like most likely he's going to be going for range first, now that he's taking gold like this. And, yeah, Chris going for a complete wall in here, so we might see you drush fast castle from him. Interesting. Not quite sure what he wants to do here. But Drushfast Castle is definitely an option. Over here, no barracks yet, actually. That's kind of interesting. That is a really interesting choice, especially considering the militia are coming in. They will be able to harass this wood a lot. If they can get into the gold back here, it's going to really hurt his gold production, of course. Gonna have to fight with all those villagers, and if he can get the hill bonus here as well, gonna be absolutely huge. Having the scout there as well, on full HP, gonna make the Drush a fair bit stronger. Ooh! That villager not in a good spot, might actually be able to just about kill it off. 10 HP there. Barracks finally coming up, forced to fight with his villagers down over here. And it looks like he's getting some good harass here, definitely making it worth it right now. Only problem is his opponent's in feudal right now, and gonna be able to go for archers straight away, and ooh! Those militia are game, getting that close to the town centre. Some good micro there from Chris, will make sure most of them stay alive. Losing quite a few hit points there, but still surviving. No range is being thrown up either yet, because he probably doesn't have the wood amount, thanks to Chris's meddling down here. 
and he only just has the wood amount to get it up now. Forced to fight with four of his villagers over here. Potentially could lose this one if Chris does micro here. And if he is paying attention here, it looks like though he's going to try and take out the scout first. And it looks like he's going to get it too. Yes, he will. And he could probably get that villager over there if he really targeted in on it. But I think those militia are getting a little bit too... Oh, I think he noticed. He's going to get it. So he did notice that villager there on low HP and he will kill it off. And he will get a big advantage from this in the start. Really well played by Chris so far. He's, looks like he's completely walled himself in now. Yes, he has. I wasn't expecting this on such an open map. Like, if we look at this, this amount of wall around here, it's absolutely crazy, but I have no doubt we're going to be seeing a fast castle from Chris now. And if we don't, I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous strategy to do. Double archery, naturally, for Sal. Continuing to move up with these villagers here. Don't exactly know what he's planning on doing with these guys, especially considering the militia is just running after them. That wolf there as well, going to make life hard. And, ooh, running into a pack of three over here as well. This could be an issue now. That wolf gonna get that villager. Yep. And if they come forward, they're gonna hit another two wolves. This game is just not going in favor of Sal right now. I think those wolves might even claim another villager here. The archer is out, so it might be able to help. Gonna just get out of that. I think if that archer wasn't there, that would have been a lot worse. Tower coming up on the gold. Definitely a good idea from Chris. Single archery range and blacksmith, so it looks like we're going to be seeing an up, but we'll check the resources. Yep, more than enough there to be fast castling. 30 pop from him, and it'll probably be about a 16, 17 minute fast castle, which isn't too bad off the back of a drush. That tower going to push pretty much everything here back, and a tower coming up from Sal right now. It looks like he will be trying to push here. Starting to stonewall, definitely a good decision, actually, from what this is. Because, of course, the tower does allow you to push in so much easier. Wall at this stage comes up so much quicker than really any defending, so you can just go for that. And now this tower is practically useless. The idea was that, of course, Chris wouldn't be able to wall behind it, but he's done it already, so doesn't exactly matter. Chris halfway to Castle Age. Sal nowhere near going up right now. And it looks like Chris is just going to be able to go Cavalry Archer and just destroy his opponent if this happens. His economy, of course, isn't in the best shape in the world after fast castling. You do have a pretty limited number of villagers. In this case, it's 30. But it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Be very interesting. Saying that, I'd say Sal knows what's going on. It's pretty hard not to tell when your opponent fully walls and rushes. But he's still got to bust in. That's the thing. Going up to a third range. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Fast castle into three range production. This will be interesting if you can do it. But then again, Chris is the master of build orders and, well, math, so... I would say if he puts it up, he could do it. Alright, what are we going? Cavalry Archer, Cavalry Archer, and has enough resources left over for more Cavalry Archers. Brilliant. No bloodlines yet, we've got to remember this as well. Has managed to fully wall himself in with archery ranges. And hopefully he's set his gather points right. Yes, he has, so of course not going to lose any more archers to that. And right now, Sal is in a lot of trouble. He's going to have to figure out something to do here. Is taking stone probably a really good idea, actually, to be doing so? Going to be able to hopefully either get up more town centers, watch towers, or wall himself in with this. I think we'll probably see some defensive towers if the cavalry archer rating gets too hardcore. Cavalry Archer still being produced, having a little bit of trouble right now, especially with this tower here. Has taken the gold in the back, definitely a good decision. We'll put up a gate over here, so it looks like he will be trying to get harassed out through this way, and just come in and harass his opponent straight away. If he manages to get onto this stone here, could probably kill off at least four or five of those villagers, if he manages to get in there quickly without his opponent seeing him. Saying that as well, does have Bodkin already, so in a pretty good position right now. Of course, no bloodlines has been done. Stone going to be taking that now, actually. An interesting choice. Probably going to be trying to get more defensive towers up, but we'll see how it goes. Looks like the cavalry archers will get out of there before the archers manage to come through. And I think they might be able to try and bust through here, because Chris doesn't have the cavalry archer amounts at the moment, which he's going to need to be able to push this back. And here we go. Potentially could try and drop some buildings and a siege workshop. Perfect play by Chris, as we should expect. Really well done by him. Going to be able to fit exactly in the gap there, because that tree there should seal it. And they're going to just be able to reach that villager there, but the cavalry archers will push them back. 
And here come those cavalry archers for Chris that we were talking about earlier. Tower is up in defense on the gold, one on the wood as well. Haven't seen one on the stones. So that's going to be the real main point at the moment. If Chris can get in there, it's going to do a lot of damage. Chris just looking for a point to attack right now. Just doing a bit of poking, a bit of prodding, trying to figure out what his opponent's doing, how he's doing it. Because remember, Chris is in castle, whereas Sal isn't, and Sal hasn't even started to advance yet. So every moment Chris is up at the moment, he's getting a massive advantage. And again, just poking a little bit more, trying to get some kind of harass. But it looks like he's going to be able to get out of here in time. Of course, that's the thing with cavalry archers. If they aren't going to win, they can just run away. Or you can micro your ass off until you win. Two for the price of one, not bad. Actually, probably three there for the price of one. Not bad at all. Again, still trying to push in through here by the looks of it. But Chris just... Keeping his defense up really well at this stage. Saying that though, there is only a 100 point score difference right now. Fourth range is going, Oh, that's a stable actually. So a third range already up and a stable going up right now for Sal. Going to be able to get bloodlines on those cavalry archers. The one thing Chris is lacking at the moment, has got the plus one armor. Still needs to get the plus two on that to make him really, really effective. But at the moment, these archers over here got game. They're actually going for the tower. Something we don't usually see. Oh, he's found the stone. He's going to get two, potentially a third, and a fourth. Even had the tower there. Oh, going to just grab that last one there. Really well played by Chris there. Grabbing some villagers. Extremely smart play. Sal, still nowhere. Well, hasn't started, Castle. He's pretty close. He only needs 100 more food. Then he'll be able to go. But Chris at this stage is just piling on the pressure right now. Putting up another town center, finally, and another one over here as well. So we'll be going up to the three town center. Probably going to boom off the back of this as well. However, taking so long to get those town centers up, probably going to be able to constantly produce cavalry archers as well. So Chris really going for it here, and a mangonel actually moving forward as well. Going to make it really hard for these archers and skirmishes to push into these cavalry archers, of course. It's hard enough as it is, especially if there's a hill here for them to fight off. But once that mangonel comes in, you either have to be paying extreme attention, so you can lose a lot of ability in your economy, of course but as well as the fact that you can lose so many units in just seconds. Got to be really careful whenever mangonels are involved. Townsend up, and this one here will be up in a second. There we go. And it looks like Chris is going to push in now. Again, just continuing to poke here. And, ooh, archers are going to... Are they going to go forward? If they go forward here, they could be in trouble. That Mangonel as well, it will be able to start damaging the town center if it wants to right now. So going to be interesting, and I'm pretty sure Sal should have seen the Mangonel by now, so he's either going to have to retreat out right now, or take it out really quickly. And the problem is, as well, when there's a Mangonel out, buildings are in trouble. Cavalry archers don't do so much damage to buildings, Mangonels do. So we're going to have to be really careful in this situation. Potentially going to be able to rip down the barracks and force another one up if he wants to go for uh, pikes and again force the archery range up. Or could even start mangonelling down the town centre and grabbing villages like we're seeing right now. More cavalry archers coming in for Chris. Sal finally hitting the castle edge. No idea how he's going to play this one. Could potentially get a knight or two out to try and deal with the mangonel. So he can bring the archers in which will soon be crossbows I'm sure. And no, he's going crossbow cavalry archer. Interesting that he's not getting a knight or two out to try and deal with this mangonel. Very interesting that he's not doing that. Cavalry archers, of course, just being spammed across the map right now. More mangonels out in play, and it looks like Chris is coming over here, and he's going to be able to grab another two villagers. This is looking really bad for Sal right now. It's two mangonels taking down his archers. He doesn't have anywhere and if anywhere near enough of an army to take on these cavalry archers right now. Not to mention when bloodlines is done. And I'm going to assume that will be soonish, but we'll see. Sal being really low on resources, definitely keeping them low, so a good play by Kim there. 89 population for Chris, Sal on 76, so there's a pretty big difference there to start with, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to start mangonelling down this town centre if he wants. See so workshop going up, going to slow it down though. Very well played there. And it looks like, yep, mangonelling down the town centre, and not a lot that Sal can really do. He can't push into it. Saying that, though, he has got those knights out that I was talking about earlier. Don't have any armour upgrades on them, though, so they could be in a little bit of trouble here, especially with the cavalry archers on the hill, as we can see, at that critical mass, where they can just pretty much one-hit kill. Another mangonel is actually in over here. These units here are going to be in a lot of trouble. A lot of them are already hurt. Changing the formation, of course. Definitely a smart play, and ooh, that's going to hurt. Luckily, they were up on the hill. And ooh, getting another big chunk there. However, he has lost two mangonels to this, but 
looks pretty worth it when we see that pile of bodies there. Cavalry Archer should just be able to pretty much stomp anything that comes out of here. Bloodlines has been done. Knights are out in play as well for Chris. Cavalry Archers are having the heal advantage here. Definitely sitting in a good position here because he does have the heal to his advantage, but right now he's moved a little bit too far out, I think. And those cavalry archers from Chris are just going to be able to really start laying down the law. Manganel here not going to be quite so effective, especially against cavalry archers when they're on top of a hill. They don't take as much damage as you'd want them to. What's that? University coming up, no doubt. Ballistics. There's the stables on the front. Two more archery rangers coming up for Chris, slowly pushing uh, buildings actually towards his opponent right now. So he's starting to get in a lot of harass right now. Nearly up by a thousand points, so doing quite well now. And I think this might be GG for Sal. I don't know what he's going to be able to do to come back from here. He just doesn't have the army that Chris has. Chris is just too far ahead right now. Unless Sal's fast imping, which I don't think he is. Not at all. He's got zero food in the bank. Chris going to be able to go imp if he wants to. He's at 99 population right now. Probably going to be a bit away from it still, but... We'll see what he decides to do. It depends what he wants to go into. If he wants to keep booming, then actually it'll take a long time. But if he wants to, you know, if he wants to imp and stops building villages, he could go for it. Market coming up for him as well. No doubt that's ballistics getting done there. And if not already done. Ooh, might be cutting villager production right now. Or could be microing. Another town center coming up over here. I don't know if he's cutting villager production or microing. Because he could be going for that fast imp. Well, at this stage, it's not really a fast imp. It could be looking to go imp. Because he's definitely outmasters his opponent right now. And, oh, that was a massive mangonel hit there. Cavalry Archers up on top of the hill, naturally, with that 70 HP. Going to take a little bit less damage and, of course, a little bit more to take down than a normal archer. Especially when on top of a hill. But... Uh, so, doing well there. Managing to push Chris back for a bit. However, Chris changing formation. And there we go. Like, you can see there, they take... Nowhere near. They're not one hit killed like crossbows and skirmishes are. And I think Chris is just going to be able to kind of destroy what's left here. I don't even think he should be microing at this stage. He knows he's going to win this one here. Saying that though, mangonels are always a threat. So, not saying you should take your eye off them. Just you don't need to micro as hard. It's You're not trying to be the best microer in the world at that point. Oh, saying that, the tower over here was actually killed off. Interesting. I didn't notice that. Probably by these knights here by the looks of things. Yep. Plus one armor on them, plus one attack as well. Cavalry archers don't have the plus two armor yet. Interesting, going for the plus one attack beforehand. Stone camp over in the back. Outpost is up for defensive purposes, of course. Town center over there. Have we seen any more town centers from Sal? No, so Sal's gone up with no more town centers. So right now, every moment Chris is just in the game, the longer the game goes at the moment, the more it's going in favor of Chris. Because Chris has that constant village production out of four town centers right now. And he's just on par with army as well. The strategies worked really well for him. Running in, sniping one cavalry archer, getting out of there, managing to grab the mangonel as well at the cost of one knight. Definitely worth it considering the amount of damage it can be done and the fact that it takes so long to build a mangonel. I think Chris has got this one. There's not a lot I can see happening to be able to take it back unless there's like a mangonel hit that like three mangonels out and they attack all at once and all these guys are clumped up on top of each other patrolled and they all die in one hit and then I don't know he spawns a cobra car I don't know that's probably the best I can see it happening anyway of course not gonna be able to garrison all the villages inside that tower gonna lose a lot of them over here and how many bodies do we see we see one two three four five six villages there getting killed off to one of Chris's over here, which isn't so bad, is going for the wall though, probably a ballsy move at that stage considering there were so many cavalry archers there, could have lost a lot more villagers there than he did. But really interesting play by Chris so far, has been extremely offensive and kept a good eye on his own base and he knows when to play defensively. Well not even playing defensively, but he knows to throw up walls to stall, at any rate he's a great staller in this case. Ooh, is he going to go for the hill and fight? Yes, so Sal is going for the hill here, but he is going to continue to try and get out of there. Cavalry Archer still looks like it's in favor of Chris, and I think the ballistics has definitely been done. Don't think we've seen it yet for Sal. Actually, there's a university over here, so we've probably seen it. Looks like this tower will be coming down right now. Chris not scared of it at all. Of course, not garrison. Going to do a lot less damage, and plus two attack and armor on those knights. Interesting. Chris could be going for a knight switch here, and probably go up into uh, paladins if he really wants to. 
but I don't think he's going to make it. He looks like he's starting to go up, try to go up to Imp. He's got quite a few resources there. But right now, Sao is just in so much trouble. Not even using the hill bonus here fully, but just destroying everything here. And reinforcing as well. It's got light cavalry in there as well. Saying that Sao might defend this one here. Those towers really helping out. Just really not caring about the hill bonus here quite so much. But again, in come more and more reinforcements, and as the reinforcements get thinned out for Sal, Chris just has that economy where he can just keep on building and building and building until his opponent can't build anymore. Castle coming up right next to the town center here. Actually, this is the GG move, I think. And there we go, GG from Sal. That castle is just going to be able to take out the blacksmith. Might be able to arrange the siege workshop if he was lucky. We're going to be able to take out the town center as well. And Sal had no resources, I think, to go up. Yeah, and we can't swap because... This game is stupid sometimes. Anyway, probably not even enough stone there to be able to get it up after all these towers and the fact he lost his stone so early. Anyway, really well played by Chris. I thought it was a great game.